Hi there, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel, it's the first time you've visited it. And we have another instalment of Gran Turismo Sport, this time it's Daily Race C from Brands Hatch in Group 4. And yeah, we're over on our stateside account once again, and there's good reason for that. Um, I have, in the last 10 days, become a dad for the first time, so this race was done during night feeds. So that's the kind of dedication I'm um, pulling out for this to bring videos of a, I would say, high quality, but of some sort of a quality. Anyway, yeah, this race was, yeah, it had a couple of contentious moments in it, and it was only my second race of the week, so I was rusty, um, but so was P2, by the looks of the way he came off that corner. Um, so yeah, we had a race on the stateside account, qualified in P3, which wasn't too bad, but this is a difficult circuit to get right, it is one of those circuits that the slightest mistake will spin you out and what we see is I think the cold tyres, I don't know if P2 was just feeling a bit of pressure, he's kind of losing P1, he's very wide coming around this corner so we gain a lot of time and he goes defensive there but then we see a gap so we decide to send it and I was probably a little bit over aggressive there, uh, I don't know what you think, let's have a look from the point of view of our friend in P2. Uh, it's, yeah, it wasn't the cleanest move. Hands up to that one. If I could have went back and done that again, I would have done it a little bit cleaner. But from my point of view, I'll show you, okay, now I like to show you what sort of view I'm seeing. This is what i seen as we approach this corner. Um, we gain a lot here, so we know he's losing time, and we know he's maybe a little bit under pressure. So I'm well up the inside there, but I probably didn't take enough of the curb. And, you know, it's a little bit overly aggressive. He probably thinks it was a dirty move. Mm, you know, it's one that's probably questionable. I probably wouldn't like it if it was done on me. So, yeah, but look at it from that point of view. So, apologies if that is the case. But, in the heat of the battle, I felt it was okay and raced on. Tried to chase down P1. Because P2, as you can see, we kind of gapped him. And that left us with just over a second gap. We were about two seconds behind P1 at this point in the Brazilian. So, in this race, the soft tyres, we started at the front of the grid, so we went with the softs to begin with, and that was um, the strategy to try and break away from the pack. And it did, it worked. Um, as you can see, we, we are doing a, a race on our own now in P2, um, and P1 will be on soft as well. So, if you start for the back, the mediums are certainly better to go on. This, as I said, was only my second race of the week. Um, my activity on here has been curtailed slightly due to the fact that, as I said, I had a little baby girl during the last 10 days, and that has meant, you know, priorities have laid elsewhere. But still committed to bringing videos to the channel, as I said, in amongst night feeds. And, you know, the stateside server proved a decent race to jump onto because it was 2 in the morning, so the server was of a decent standard. Uh, some A-plus drivers in, and you know, felt like that was probably, you know, make a better race than in the EMEA um, server. So that's why we find ourselves once again over stateside. So... This track, as I said, it's one of these ones where it's difficult to get right. You can see there, that corner in particular, it's difficult. It's such a late apex in the reverse camber. I'll throw you over to the side. But if you take through a lap here, you can see P1 is, as I said, a couple of seconds ahead. We've got a nice gap there, but run, you can run wide in that corner there, and you can get right on the curb here. Nice big, thick curb to just rotate the car round and again you've got a little run off here you can break just as the curve starts and run well wide here get fully on the power and coming up we've got the late apex now this corner is crucial um, because if you don't get this right you're just losing time all the way down the longest straight on the track if you get it right you're gaining so we take it not too shabbily and we are powering down to sequence of right handles now these are difficult to get right this one's not so bad you can just clip that apex here you've just got to watch it don't run too wide because it's very easy to let the car just go that level wide get the left hand tires on the kerbs we can take a lot of the kerb here and you've got to because if you don't you will go wide and you will end up on the grass and you will spin out 
again here. Stick out a blind right hander, but you've got to take a lot of that grass here. Run it as wide as you can without clipping it and taking it to the left hander there. Not the best exit, but it's all about just keeping it on the track at Brands Hatch. Otherwise, it is certain spin outs that you're going to see. As you can see, you probably took that a little bit better, but get fully on the power and over the line we go for a 128.6 which I think was my fastest lap of the race and it's only going to get a slightly slower from here because the tyres as you can see in the left hand top corner of the screen they were just wearing very quickly so forward and on to the next sort of action point of this race and the, sort of what made the, the race spice up from my point of view was the fact that I wasn't really that sure about the strategy because I hadn't done the race um, enough times to really be clear on it and the previous used to started from the back and on the medium so this was the first time I'd started from the front on the soft so I was thinking pitch would be sort of lap 7, lap 8 but I was just thinking to myself just go with whatever P1 does just follow that strategy and we won't go too far wrong uh, so that was the, the plan anyway as you can see we've got a healthy gap between ourselves and third place I think that's the Chilean flag and we have not really made any inroads with P1 but I've got enough of a gap where I'm going to be able to clearly see what his pitch strategy is going to be so round we come, final turn and like I said I completely missed the fact he went into the pits and I think the fact that his car is green and he drove across the green AstroTurf area I lost sight, I didn't even see him get into the pits so everybody behind me is now pitting and we are out on these badly worn tyres, so that right away left me feeling a sense of dread because I was just losing time all the way around on this lap. So I had a probably about a one and a half second gap before this lap started and as you see now we came into the pits and out of the pits. So after we come out we can see P3 has uh, picked up a 0.5 second penalty luckily for us but it's not a 1.5 second lead anymore, he is now closing right in on us. We can take it back here and you can see that he now smells blood. We're on slightly fresher tyres but at the moment they're cold so I'm having to take it a little bit of caution around these corners but you can see he is closing in on us. The fact that he has that 0.5 second penalty though is a big help to us. So here we go again see running a little bit wide and he would have got the move done more more than likely but he had to serve that penalty which you know helped us but P3 then just jumped straight in his position so it didn't really help me that much I was still under a lot of pressure here and what I'd find is I just couldn't shake him out the slipstream there and I'm up ahead sort of you know, making sort of inroads in terms of breaking away a little bit and then we would just you know be reeled in by the slipstream you know, I've got a healthy lead going down there, but all it takes is to stay within 7, 0.75, 0.75 tenths of a second, and you know, when you're looking through these sequences, you can catch up. So that's what we find has happened. So we're in P2 and thinking to ourselves, here we go just defend that but as you can see the top right hand corner of the screen P1 has taken a trip to the barrier into the shadow realm now what happened here is worth watching because it is probably quite heartbreaking for him he's led the race start to finish really comfortable gets a couple of tyres in the gravel and off he goes and helpless to watch us by and a rage quit so what's happened though is we've now found ourselves from P2 to P1 and the victory is within our grasp however we are under a lot of pressure in the the guy in P2 Sly vs Vandal was finding some pace in the latter stages of the race coupled with the fact that we were sort of looking behind more than we were looking in front because we could just see that gap coming down all the time and we take it into the last lap um, for the final lap battle and we can look at it from his point of view as we see how much he's closed in and how the fact we are struggling to get away uh, from him because of the, the slipstream. We'll run a little bit wide there, he's a little bit of a better, better turn in there and exit so this straight was obviously going to be crucial. 
he manages to take this a little bit better than we do in terms of the exit. You can see we don't get any sort of a breakaway and he is now gunning for us. And we've got a series, the series of right-handers here. We've seen how we managed to overtake P2 at, in lap one. So I'm waiting for that move. So I run go defensive here and he's got a great run alongside. And then he turns in and there's contact. And from that contact, he gets hit with a one second penalty. Now what happened there, I don't think was my fault. However, he clearly did because in the lobby afterwards, I got the WTF question mark treatment from him, which I replied back with a series of question marks because I didn't really know what he wanted me to do in that situation, but he clearly felt I was dirty um, because he was not happy with that move. So we go across the line to take the win, so delighted with that, but let's take it back and see exactly what happened because it's, you know, I'd like to know if anybody wants to comment to say if they think it was a, a dirty move. I accept in lap one when I made the move on P2 that it was an overly aggressive move, hands up to that, but what I was you know, clearly doing here was defending, so I, I stick to the right hand side and this is a difficult corner to go round the outside of somebody on. We're both on the brakes at this point. We're, he's not ahead of me at any point here. He's turning in. He's, I mean, he's basically turning in to take the racing line through that corner. He's going to want to take two tyres up on that kerb, as far as I can see. But we're there. We are more than on the kerb. You know, we are absolutely more than on the kerb. Let's walk through that. I mean, I don't know how far, I mean, I've given him, I think we can all agree, I've given him quite a lot of room here, look at it all, <laughs> but, you know, he was just not happy with that, um, so, yeah, it is what it is, but, I mean, he's going to say I was dirty, I don't think I was, hmm, I don't know, I mean, I'm barely not, I'm not on the track basically, so I don't know how else he can expect me to do anything, but he's probably unhappy that he gets the one second penalty for the contact, not my fault, you know, take that up with Polyphony Digital, um, but yeah, he was not happy at all, anyway, that concludes the race, we took the win, I was happy with that, he was not happy with that, but what else can we do? Couple of contentious points. Am I a dirty driver? Two instances there where you could look at. Maybe one dodgy, maybe the other one not so dodgy. I don't know. You decide. But anyway, that is that. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate the people who do watch and especially those who subscribe to the channel as we try and get to 100 subs. That would be amazing. But yeah, here we are making videos in the midst of a lockdown with a newborn. That's commitment, you know, where else are you going to get that sort of commitment? Um, anyway, feel free to, as I said, subscribe if you like it. But until the next video, I will bid you farewell, over and out.